She's passionate about telling stories of amazing women who are rocking the world and empowering women to live, love, and thrive. Here's your host, Katherine Gray. Hi, welcome. Welcome to Live, Love, Thrive Women's Empowerment Hour, brought to you by 360 Karma. We're so happy to have you here today. We hope you're following our conversations on Facebook and also following us on Twitter and Instagram at My360Karma. So we have an incredible guest today. She is actually the Woman of the Year for the LA uh, County Commission for Women. Uh, I'm going to be going to that luncheon where they're going to be <laughs> celebrating her. Please give a warm welcome to Lindy Wargus. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm Thanks great. for having me. Oh, glad to have you. I know it's a little hot in here. It's a little warm. I love, I love the fan. Yeah. I knew we had show fans. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you are getting this amazing award, Mo yes. Woman of the Year for the LA Commission, I mean, on women. And that is a, like a really big deal. This is their 34th annual luncheon. Yes. And they're celebrating all the wonderful work you do. How does that feel? Pretty incredible because I yeah. wasn't I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm probably uh, putting you on the spot here because I know you're very <laughs> humble. Yeah. So I mean, it's I, I was surprised that when the nominator, uh, someone who's in supply diversity at Disney, nominated me, Ankit, um, and he called and said you were selected. And yeah. I thought, oh, I'm selected as a nominee. Yeah. You know, and he said, no, no, like you're selected wow. for the award. Oh my gosh. That... <laughs> and I said, wow. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, actually, I'm, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so wonderful. Well, you're so deserving of it. Um, we met not that long ago, but through people that uh, I really respect and love working with, which is uh, Elisa Parker and Tabby Biddle. Yes. From the uh, yes. 50 Women Can Change the World. I'm on their board. And um, they, uh, you know, spoke so highly of you and said, you know, oh, my gosh, this woman is such a connector. And I was like... <laughs> Until I met you, I didn't know what they meant. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this woman knows everybody. And is, you have such a gift of putting people together. Oh, and thank you. Uh, I know you're involved in a lot of different things, and we're going to talk about that. Um, I also want to talk about your incredible story of how you ended up here in America. <laughs> I mean, it, it just really blows me away. And I, I imagine there's listeners out there that have similar stories. So right, I always like absolutely. to share the, the journey. But um, your mom actually uh, ha gave you over to your aunt and uncle, right? Correct. Uh, back yeah. in Taiwan, where what? you were born. Soon after I was born. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they pretty much raised you, right, until you yes. were eight. Eight. Yes. So yeah. they um, they had four kids of their own. Yeah. And um, my mom had me, and she, I guess she had other things to do. Right. Right. <laughs> so, right. Um, my aunt and uncle raised me, and they were my parents. Right. Um, and. Then, you know, and, and throughout the years, I saw my, my dad or my, yeah. my mom, you know, here and there. Right. And you did mention that your dad, your actual biological dad was very wealthy, but the aunt and uncle, like, have yeah, they, little means. Right. But you grew up around their kids and a lot of love. And, right. I mean, you can't ask right. for more than that. No, right? and I never yeah. felt like there wasn't anything I couldn't do. Right. They were, they were just incredible parents. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know. When I was eight and a half, my mom came back and said she was getting remarried and she was taking me with her. And I thought, I don't want to go with her. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. Not my mom. Well, so I said, to take my country. cousin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, take her. She wants to go. And they were like, no, I don't want to go. <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh. Yeah. And so we came to the States and we went to New Orleans and that was a shock. And you, and you, you were sharing with me, you didn't even know the language, right? I didn't. So you're pulled up out of this family with a family that you really don't know, even though it's your mom and, right. and then this new stepdad. Right. You come to a country you know nothing about, and you end up in the city of New Orleans and not even speaking the language. I mean, I, 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 at eight years old, this had to be, like, kind of traumatic, right? Right. It was really daunting. Even though it's a blessing in disguise in the long run. Right. In, in the, the long, long run, run. yes. Yeah. But in the first year and a half that I was in the States... It was it wasn't a great time to be in New Orleans. It was you know it was the '70s. Right. We lived in an area that was predominantly white, and I was almost like an alien. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, you know I had to learn the language pretty quick. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't a very receptive town or city that we were in. Right. And then my stepdad got transferred, so I had to go to ESL classes and 
you know, learn the language, and we he got transferred to um, L.A., well, to California, so right. we lived in Orange County until I was yeah. 18. Right. Until I moved. And then, yeah. and then moved to L.A. And I moved to L.A., yeah. and then I've been in L.A. pretty much ever since. Yeah. So this and is really my life here. You know, with this big immigration conversation going on, I just want to say, so your parents moved here for a, a job, right? Mm-hmm. And then you were raised here, um, and you know, you're an immigrant. You came from right. Taiwan. Right. And here you are with this super successful, award winning recruitment company, uh, just making such a difference to people's lives and their, uh, you know, getting jobs and, you know, working with these huge companies to right. fill it with the right people. And, you know, and um, I mean, it's just another great success story uh, of why it's so important that we have diversity, that we have immigrants come here that are smart and driven and have their own businesses. Right. And, you and know, I think people overlook that. I, I don't know what's going on in this country that there's such a, uh, they're turning such a weird sh- cold shoulder to, to immigrants. But right. I don't think it's the majority of people. Right. right. But there, I, but, there's, a, you know. there's a big enough population of people that yes. affect how we do business and how we hire and how we affect our culture, yes. whether it be at home or in our communities, and you know, having that diversity of um, of employees, of mm-hmm. staff, of um, you know, community mm-hmm. brings a lot of diversity of thought, right? And I, I think it actually makes us much healthier. Yes. Um, and you know, there's many statistics out there that show that um, you know, women-owned businesses and minority-owned businesses and small businesses really help engage the community, and if we can engage people yes. um, with the small businesses that the local community we can really actually affect the you know economic climate of our of our our, 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 our country yes and so I so it's interesting that a, a lot of people don't see that but if we don't actually really get behind all these small businesses and minority owned businesses and we're really the marginalized groups like the LGBTQ yeah. groups and whatnot yeah. it will negatively impact everyone right um i i was at a tuck program at dartmouth not too long ago and they talked about that they talked right. about how it has already been mapped out what it will do to all ethnic groups right if we don't all get behind it so it right. will affect the, ca- the caucasian race it will affect everyone right um and it's so it's unfortunate that people now still don't see it right right oh, they do need to be educated right right yeah and so um, your journey was that you actually were in the financial sector, right? Correct. And then made this leap into recruitment, right? Right. right. Which yeah. was kind of the best thing you ever did, right? Yeah, it was. It was the best thing. I, did. I was in finance and accounting for about nine years, and someone uh, at my company had referred me to um, a, a large search firm, and I thought okay, you know, I'll go meet someone. I was working 80 hours a week and I was a young, I was a young single mom. So um, they didn't call me for an accounting and finance job. Two months later, they called me for a recruiter job. And I thought, you guys really didn't listen to what I said I was looking for. And I thought, well, I'll go keep my options open. And I went and met with them. And I thought, you know what, what's the worst thing that could happen? I don't like it and I go back to finance and accounting it's not going anywhere and it was a complete life change three months later I knew I'd never go back to accounting and finance Um, and that first year and yet you do recruitment in the area of finance finance and and accounting accounting. right right (laughs) right and and so it it gives me the ability to really help counsel the candidates right because you've been been in that right yeah Uh, and it helps me counsel the clients because I understand what it is that they're looking for right and And you work with fairly big companies right very large companies as well Um, I've worked with Disney with you know Sony we worked with some of those the bigger companies yeah um, over the years and we've worked with um, we, we work a lot with um, entertainment media companies and tech companies. And how do you say the name of your company? Integritas Resources. Integritas Resources. Yeah. In so it's case Latin. Pe- in case people <laughs> want to check it out. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but you know, it's great because if it is a small or early growth company, and we work with a lot of those companies, mm-hmm. we help really develop the team mm-hmm. um, and help um, help counsel the executives on mm-hmm. what they actually need in that mm-hmm. position. Sometimes they come to us and they say that they need a CFO, but mm-hmm. they're really not in a need for a CFO, right. that they actually need a different position. So right. we really are kind of nailing down, what do you need long-term? Right. And you know, let's, let's give your staff some room to grow 
And sometimes right. you don't necessarily need to bring in a huge heavy hitter. Right. Um, you know, sometimes you need to give your, your organization some time right. to grow into those positions. Right. Yeah. So what do you do? You go into these companies and, and you fill their positions? or I do. do you, so yeah. okay. uh, they engage us. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say 95% of our clients over the last 15 years um, have been referrals. Um, so the majority of my clients are referrals. That's great. Um, and I go in and meet with the executives and get a sense of what it is that they're really looking for. Um, and then, um, you know, make some recommendations of what I think would work and what yeah. I think wouldn't work. And we do, even though we're a con contingency firm, we do a full 360 degree um, evaluation on these individuals. So we actually right. go out and recruit the people that we feel would be a really great fit for that organization. Wow. Yeah. That's, I mean, so it's, nothing more thrilling really than putting somebody into a position that changes their life right. and makes that company happy. I could right. see what there'd be a lot of fulfillment in that. Right. Yeah. Um, is there something women could do to better prepare for going out and being recruited that maybe you think women in particular fall short in? Um, I do. You know, we did. Um, we, we've been doing, uh, you know, a lot of C-suite positions for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. And more and more we've had, uh, you know, the executives or the private equity firms and whatnot indicate that they would like a female right. um, executive because maybe perhaps they don't have that diversity right. um, as, Gee, as they would like, you know. But <laughs> sure, there's a few of those companies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One or two. Exactly. Yeah. But what's interesting is what I've seen more and more of recently is Every once in a while we'll get, um, actually one of the recent searches, uh, several women either came to us and said, oh, I'm sure that they don't want to hire a female, but. So they led with a negative. Right. And, um, and then I, you know, would explain to them, actually they do. Yeah. You know, so I think that they, I think that a lot of women, you know, we've talked about this many times before, that women have a tendency to judge themselves much harsher yes. for specific positions, right. whether it be for, um, you know, an employment or running for office or whatever right. it may be, whereas men are much more comfortable to say if they have one thing, they're, yeah. you know, they're perfect more for the job. More confident. Yeah. Right. Like if there's 10 criteria, the man will have one and right. say, oh, I'm, I'm eligible for this. Right. Exactly. Where the woman will say, oh, I only have five of those things. Right. Yeah. Right. And so I think, you know, a lot of times it's really taking that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, really looking at the skill sets that you have and what's transferable. Right. Right. And not not looking at what you have and whether or not that's exactly what they're looking for. Right. But understanding how to communicate what's mm -hmm. transferable and showing the value that you can bring to the organization. Right. So even if they didn't have that exact position, what they could transfer that would actually right. enhance it. Right. 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 And so uh, I guess it's, what do you think it is that holds women back? Is it just the culture that we're brought up in that makes women less confident? Why is it that we think we need more of the criteria? What What is that about? Well, you know, I think one, I think one, we just haven't had as much time, yeah. right, yeah. as men in general in some of these positions. Um, but I also think that it's really important for women to help other women. Absolutely. And, Bingo. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. And I'm all about that. I personally think there's a special place in health for women who don't help other women. Yeah. Um, Me but, too. You know, yeah. but... I, well, I'll look back on my career, for instance, and the, it was not the women that yeah. helped me throughout my career. Right. It was the men Believing that actually helped yeah. me and advocated for me and whatnot. Yeah. So I think that when you're in any position that you're working in or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, that yes. you should find people within your organization to mm -hmm. be, one, advocates for you, mm -hmm. two, but get a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to be someone who's female because right. if you look at the demographics, right, yeah. there are more men in positions of power than there are women. Mm -hmm. So trying to just find women to be your mentor mm -hmm. is probably a little bit difficult to do right. to help right. you get to those stages. And right. so I think it's important to, we talk about diversity, so it's also important to have yeah. diversity as far as your mentors are concerned. Right. And I do think that there's a lot of men now that are recognizing that they need to advocate for their sisters, their daughters their mothers, right. their friends, right. and are willing to give them that leg up. Don't right. you think? Right, I think absolutely. That, I think we've put it more on the radar, like, hey, more women should be in positions of influence. It actually helps the company to be more profitable. Right. And now that they're aware of that research, you know, being a little bit more willing to take a look at that. Right. Yeah. And, and also, I think, you know, for a lot of, for a lot of men, they probably, men, men are, are much more uh, direct 
-hmm. as far as what it is that they want, mm -hmm. right? And so when you're working with individuals of you know other genders, yeah. they they're kind of expecting you to just be direct, just speak right. and say what it is that you want, right? right. They're right. not really thinking, oh, uh, let me think about like what that person wants. I think right. women have a tendency to, to do that better. Right. Um, we're thinking, you know, peripherally what, what how it's going to affect that person. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's just as simple as asking Being direct for what it is that you want. Yeah, something tells and me how you do have I get no there? problem with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> and that's why you're so successful. Um, uh, also, too, I know you... Uh, got married for the is it the third time yes yeah third time's a charm right <laughs> yes it is yeah it definitely to tom was for me. <laughs> and uh yeah and and tom i know is uh you and him have collaborated on a a, a really interesting uh, other venture um outside of this successful business that you have which is a love of yours which is yoga right yes yes yeah and so you guys uh developed a yoga strap and i know we have a couple pictures of it um and tell me about that, how it came about and, and why somebody would want that. Because I know it's a, a really popular product that you guys have invented and manufactured right, right. and you're doing really well with it. In fact, yeah. there's a website for it, right? Yes, it's, um, it's Zen Yoga Strap. ZenYogaStrap.com. Now explain it to me. So uh, yeah. uh, a couple of years ago, I think it's been a couple of years, we, um, I, was, I have been doing yoga with some of our friends. Um, I think you might know a couple of them. Um, privately, and um, a friend of mine have, would come and join us every once in a while, and this has been kind of ongoing for a couple of years, and she um, was having some knee issues at the time and um, was not as flexible. Most of us are not very flexible. Right. And oh, so... Oh, speak for yourself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, so anyway, so she, you would say, oh, I wish I, you know, I could do that or I could yeah. do this. And she'd been going to a trainer and yeah. um, a PT for some time and yeah. was not progressing. And I thought, you know, for her birthday. Yeah. Yeah. And I was an athlete all grown up. So, yeah. you know, it made perfect sense to me that you, you, some, most of us need something to help us get into a deeper stretch. Yeah. Right. Right. And you can't do it with a regular yoga strap because there's no, there's no loops. Right. And there's no tears. Yeah. Right. So I thought. You know, I'm gonna go home and make her these straps that would have tears, so yeah. that she can eventually progress up to her right, feet right. and actually get the benefits of these stretches. Otherwise, you're just sitting in those positions, you're right. not doing anything. Right. And so I went home, and my husband, um, Tom, actually makes um, ergonomic guitar straps. Right. And right. Straps. Um, and that's another cool product that, that's, too yeah, yeah. that I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, so. I know some famous guitarists have bought his straps, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. And 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 so many guitar players uh, get like a they get they get um, a, a guitar shoulder. Yeah. Um, or if you have any sort of like dis, uh, disease or yeah. anything like that in your and neck. What, what is guitar shoulder? What is so that it, it so after years of playing because uh, I think an average guitar probably weighs ten or fifteen pounds, right? right? So oh if it's gosh. a bass, it's pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, and you're wearing it on the same shoulder constantly over right. and over again and it causes so a lot of guitars actually have a little bit of a lean yeah they they <laughs> yeah because of that constant weight right which causes a problem so if you're a professional right you can't go and just have surgery right right because you're going to be out for several months right so you either have to take medication or you just gonna have to deal with the pain or get this guitar or, guitar or get the strap, strap. Which right. it goes around the waist. So right? it goes around your waist. Oh my god. It's that's called the brilliant. hip strap. Wow. And you um and so there's strap buttons are already on your guitar. You have to yeah. put for some of the straps you have to put another button in. And but you can just wear it and there's no strap here. No strap. Yeah. And can we say uh, some famous people are using yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um I think uh Davy Johnson from um Elton John, he uses it. Oh my it. god, I just saw that concert the other <laughs> it's night. It's a great concert. Oh my god, and that guitar. <laughs> His band is off the yeah. charts. That guy yeah. uses it. Yeah, wow, that's. A, I wish I'd taken note of that the other yeah. day. That's really cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. So it's, it, his his daughter in law yeah. actually saw it and ordered it, and we shipped it to London because yeah. that's where she lives. I oh think. Oh my gosh. And she then shipped it back to the states to Davy. Oh my gosh. And then Davy called Tom and said, "Hey, I want to talk to you about these straps." That's so cool. But it, it worked well for him, and we so had. So the story is, you took those that guitar strap and figured out how to Well, use so I, I came home and I told Tom yeah. that, um, listen, you know, I want to 
make these straps and Julie's taller than me. So, yeah. you know, we'll need to make it a little bit bigger for her because yeah. she's taller. And he was, and he said, I said, so, you know, can you sew that up for me? Because we have mm -hmm. an industrial sewing machine in the garage for him to make prototypes yeah. for all the different musicians. And he said, with what? And I'm like, with the guitar straps. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, okay. <laughs> That's so great. So we gave it to her for her birthday, and it kind of just took off from there. Oh, my gosh. So you created this for your friend that had this need. Uh -huh. And then you realized, oh, my gosh, a lot of people are right. going to want this. Right. And other instructors. Yeah. Um, so we, we uh, uh, did a test with some other instructors, and they, we, they gave us some really positive feedback. And we had a lot of friends who um, do yoga, and so they also were all using it and uh, very quickly. So this is basically for anybody that does yoga? Well, not just for yoga. So yeah. it, could, it could be for oh. athletes and whatnot. So for me, for instance, um, you know, I will use it to stretch at my desk. I will use it to stretch in the office. I'll right. use it to stretch if I'm you know traveling right so it's something you can take with you right and use you it do to it stretch your, you can do it now right <laughs> we should have brought one <laughs> um, so you can do it anywhere and right. the whole purpose of it it gives you a better stretch than right. if you didn't use it right because if you and have the regular have injuries like right. your friend right? right yeah and if you have regular stretching throughout the day yeah. you actually get better benefits for your body oh. than you do if you're only doing yoga twice a week oh. right because so you're this actually is something you're doing every day, every day throughout oh. Oh, the day. I love like that. Ten minutes. If you're reading something, yeah. you can stretch your shoulders out, right? Um, and so that you're you're constantly staying loose, right? Because the tight muscles are what causes the injuries, right? Right. I love it. Yeah. Wow, that's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they can find you at your recruiting firm, which right. is in which is Integritas Resources, right? And if they are also a yoga fan, they can find you at Zen Strap Yoga. Uh, Zen Yoga Strap. Yeah. Zen Yoga Strap. Dot com. Dot com. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank and you so much. And if they need much. a guitar strap, then they oh, can yes. go to slingerstraps.com. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's the name of that one? Slingerstraps. Slingerstraps.com. Slinger com. I love it. <laughs> uh, you know what? They always say a busy woman <laughs> is never doing just one thing. No. <laughs> I know I'm not either. So it's so fun to talk about all the cool things you're doing. Yes, absolutely. You're an amazing thank lady. You. I'm so excited to go to the luncheon when you're going to get Woman of the Year. Oh, thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on you. that. Thank you. And uh, just keep uh, doing the amazing work that you're doing of putting people together. I love it. Oh, I love thank it. You. This yeah. is great. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can find us here every Wednesday at noon, as you know, or look for us on YouTube or your favorite podcast. Thank you so much and make it a great week. Hugs and happiness. Bye bye. Thank you.